Born in 1452 in Tuscany, Italy, Leonardo da Vinci would grow up to become one of the greatest minds of all time. He was a highly talented artist, sculptor, visionary, and a self-taught engineering genius. But while most people have heard about da Vinci's famous works of art, like the Mona Lisa or the Last Supper, they may be less familiar with this equally well-developed part of his persona. Before his death in 1519, da Vinci would develop many revolutionary concepts and inventions that were centuries ahead of his time. So prolific was his work that it is difficult for many to believe one man could produce so much in one lifetime. And yet he did. He was driven by his desire to understand how nature works. This desire would fuel his quest to invent and experiment, leading to his remarkable insights into the workings of the natural world. Da Vinci's proficiency as an artist also allowed him to sketch out and plan his inventions and engineering ideas in great detail. So clear were many of his diagrams and blueprints that we are able to use them to build working replicas of his inventions today. It should be noted that many artists of da Vinci's time also had side gigs as architects and engineers, yet da Vinci was certainly one of the most skilled. In fact, he was employed as a bona fide engineer for many years in Milan in the late 15th century. One notable example was his work on the military defenses of Milan during the 1480s. Aware that the ruler of Milan, Duke Sforza, was looking to employ military engineers, Leonardo drafted an application letter that included a 10-point list of his engineering abilities. In case of a siege, I know how to dry up the water of the moats and how to construct an infinite number of bridges, covered ways, scaling ladders, and other machines for this type of enterprise, he wrote. It worked, and he was eventually employed as an engineer. A decade later, Sforza would commission him to paint the Last Supper. Leonardo was only 30 years old at the time and would continue to work in Milan as a military engineer for 17 years. In 1502, he was appointed as chief military engineer for the Borgia. During this time, he studied many of the existing instruments of war and designed some new weapons of his own. He famously developed designs for some of the earliest concepts of tanks, submarines, and even a primitive auto-firing gun although these were never built. Among many other designs, in 1495, he detailed plans for a three-wheeled, wind-up, self-moving automobile that has also been called the first robot. Da Vinci also had a strong understanding of levers, gears, cranes, hydraulics, ball bearings, as well as a basic grasp of the physics of flight. So what are some of Leonardo da Vinci's greatest contributions to engineering? Well, as you're about to find out, they are pretty significant. For example, he is often referred to as the first systems engineer. Through his work, he was able to create a new way of looking at and understanding how machines work. We'll let the curators at the Boston Museum of Science explain further. He reasoned that by understanding how each separate machine part worked, he could modify them and combine them in different ways to improve existing machines or create inventions no one had ever seen before. To this end, his notebooks are crammed with systemic explanations of how each component in his inventions combined to make them work as a whole. This was revolutionary for his age. Most of his greatest thoughts and studies were written in a body of work called the Codex Lester. This is currently owned by Bill Gates, although it is on display at the Seattle Art Museum and has been fully digitized for the public to view at their leisure online. Within the Codex and his 30 or so other journals are illustrations of discoveries well ahead of their time. One of the smallest of the journals is the Codex Forester, which dates to between 1490 and 1493 and contains notes on geometry, weights, mechanics, and hydraulic mechanisms. Another work contains up to 200 pages about the nature of mechanics, as well as a detailed guide on building a foundry to create an enormous metal horse. Da Vinci also made detailed studies in structural engineering, 
One example was his work on the concept of arc rupture, a previously understudied field. He made detailed sketches and treatises on the breaking strength of an arch, including developing our understanding of the line of thrust. Da Vinci also made detailed scientific studies of the nature and strength of building materials. But this wasn't just theoretical work. He also found work as an architect and adopted many of his findings into the design of the churches of Milan. Many of these churches still awe bystanders and structural engineers today. Another major development, as previously mentioned, was his study of the field of hydraulics. While working on the canals of the Arno and Lombardy regions, Leonardo da Vinci made some detailed studies on the nature of water pressure. From his work, it is widely believed that he invented the hydrometer, a device used today to measure the specific gravity of water. He is also credited with the invention of the odometer. While crude, it was perfectly functional and enabled him to create accurate maps. Modern versions of this device can be found in most forms of transportation today. But these are just some of his great works. The vast majority of his designs were never publicly published, financed, or built. In fact, some of his inventions would not have been able to be realized at the time because the technology needed to construct them did not exist. It would take centuries of technological advances for these ideas to become anything but fantasy. Leonardo's theoretical and practical work in engineering would greatly influence later engineers and earn him the mantle of first engineer of the modern era.